Hello and welcome. This is just a quick recording on how to convert a DWG file to a PowerPoint um, vector file for animation. So uh, I've just started here with a little sample exercise um, within um, CAD, so drawn up with my borders and the rest like. Just a couple of tips when it comes to preparing your CAD drawing. Um, if you can have, as you can see, zoom in here and see, if you can have your all your construction line drawn in so here we have a construction line drawn here and here we have the likes of our finished line then drawn over it so have all your lines in that prepared in CAD it makes a big difference when it comes to afterwards it's you can redraw in things from scratch within PowerPoint but generally it's a lot easier if you do this in within CAD first same thing applies with having your different color applied if you can have your color for your construction line and that drawn in in CAD it makes life a little bit easier um, one thing I would say is don't have any hidden line, don't have any of your dashed lines or your center lines done within um, AutoCAD. Uh, you can convert that within PowerPoint and if you do have dashed lines within CAD, when they come into PowerPoint they're brought in as separate entities. So every dash is its own line so you have to grab them all, group them all together. So that is a bit of a pain. Um, one other piece of advice is if you're doing text, um, try and have your text, don't have it as a standard TXT, then generally no, you see it as a series of straight lines making up your letters. Try and convert it to Arial or Calibri. Um, the reason being that if you have your TXT, um, every single stroke on the letter comes in as a separate entity. So your D here will be made up of a straight line, a straight line, an arc, and you have to again group it together and when you resize things it ends up very clunky. So if you can convert the text um, th beforehand, before you convert, it makes life a lot easier. Same thing applies then when it comes to the likes of your dimensions. If you can ensure that you've no arrowheads on your dimensions, um, the way you do that is you go into dimension, down to dimension style, and you can turn off the arrowheads. So I'm going to just modify the existing or the standard. Um, and here we have symbols and arrows. At the moment it's set as none here now, but the standard normally is close filled. So you can just select the drop down menu and just select none there like that. Likewise in your text, if you can just make sure that the standard for your text is Arial or Calibri, um, that works out an awful lot better as well. So set that as the current. Close that down. And in general, if you can prepare your drawing well beforehand, it does save a lot of work later on. So that's my symbols and arrows changed, my text changed, so I can just click OK and set that as the current. Then close that down. And you'll see when I go to apply a dimension, let's apply a, a line dimension here, that has the effect of applying my dimension without any arrowheads. So we can apply the arrowhead afterwards. Um, that's my drawing pretty much prepared and as I say, try and keep everything as clean as possible within your drawing. To export it then to something that you can use within PowerPoint, you go to File and from your drop down menu there select Export. So here's your export window and we're just going to export this as a sample and we're going to save it to the desktop and you can see Metafile is here as the standard because I've been using this recently enough and um, probably won't be for yourself so if you hit the drop down menu here for type of file just WMF Windows Media Metafile and go Metafile and just save. Now it won't save it straight away you have to select the object that you want saved. So that's selected you can hit enter and then that will be saved. Um, but just a word of warning, if you have something like this where part of the object is out of the screen, even though it may be highlighted or selected, um, then it will be cut off when it comes into PowerPoint. Just put that guy there. Um, so that's our fella here. Done. If I minimize him down, we can see there's our sample meta file on our um, screen. So that's what it looks like. Um, if I open up my PowerPoint, We'll just have a look here now. Um, so we open up a problem, we can import that into it. So if I right click on my slide here, I'm just going to change the layout so it's blank, so I don't have any of these text boxes 
in position so that's set up then and I go to insert here so I select the insert tab and picture so that should take away and I just scroll down desktop and scroll down and there's select my sample file so when I insert him first of all he's just inserted as a dead object I can't select my individual lines so I'm going to resize him up just roughly for the moment just for the demonstration here um, obviously enough if you push control on and zoom out with the wheel on your mouse you can it'll zoom out for you and I'm just going to roughly do that I'm not going to be too exact now obviously you should be more exact when you're doing it just for demonstration purposes so zooming in right click group group and this is will give us the option to it says this is an import picture not group do you want to convert to a Microsoft Office drawing I'll just do that again there just to make sure you got that so we right click we select the object we right click over it and we go down to format picture oh, sorry pardon me group sorry a group on group and then we click yes and you can see straight away the text itself will automatically clean up. I mean, it goes from being a pixelated image to a nice vector, clean line image. Um, now, everything is still, if I zoom out here, everything is still all in the one entity. So when I select it there like that, everything you can see is still part of one box. So what I might do is I just select it and right click again, and for a second time, hit group. Ungroup. And you can see it breaks everything up into its individual entities. So if I hit escape out of it now, you'll notice that if I hit on an empty space, you get this big box around everything. That's a box coming from the original file. So that's a bit of a pain because if you want to select an individual entity, you'll automatically select this first. And you'll be trying to select something and you won't know why it won't highlight it. So if you zoom out and just select the blank space, that'll select the overall box and just delete him and straight away everything centers up so we're into our main image and um, just to prepare your file this is just going to go through preparing the file and then the next sh show will show you just about the basics of animation but to select your file if you just want to select zoom in on an object just select the object control and the wheel will zoom in an object and I'm just going to show you how to resize the lines so we can just drag a box over all our lines here I'm going to just apply all these with one consistent line weight. So rather than select them individually, it's easier to select them all. If I right click then, so if I just, you must right click over an object. If I right click over here in an empty space, it'll unselect things. So I just reselect everything again. Browse over the likes of one of our boxes, any of them at all. Right click. And it'll bring up your little drop down menu so I go to format object and format object is where a lot of what we're going to be doing takes place you can see here we have a series of options available line color being one line style being one of them so line style is going to be where I'm going to change my line weight so for this one here I'm going to just change it to 1.25 you can see the effect that that has it you know it enlarges it the line weight you can also choose whether you want to have it flat or round to show you what that does, if I zoom in on the objects themselves so I'll just exit out of that before I do that if I zoom in on any particular line you can see, let's even at one of the joins here we can see they're square at the moment if I just select the two of them here right click format object I can apply a round cap here and moving over you can see closing that you can see it just rounds off the corner so if I just move that out you can see this line here is rounded on the edge whereas this one here is square on the edge so it makes it a little bit tidier so control and Z just undo that so to select say the likes of my line let's say in this development here um, I'm going to first of all just tidy up my drawing, say change my line colors to something consistent. So for my say construction, I'm going to select each of my construction lines like so. And I'm going to just again right click, format object, 
and I'm going to change the color to line color blue here so I always use blue as my kind of standard likewise for the likes of um, say the likes of dimensions in it orange is always kind of a nice one but as long as you keep it standard I think is the main thing so that it doesn't confuse students so the next thing then is to apply say a line style so if we look here this line here this line here in this particular situation these wouldn't be solid lines these would be fold lines so we were saying before in CAD don't apply hidden detail or center lines um, within CAD you can do that within PowerPoint and again this happens by right clicking going to format object and in our line style we have our width here we have our line style we can go down here to dash type and here we are dash type like so um, you might want to maybe change the color for that I'm going to maybe change that to, to green just to make it stand out and then close it so that way we can apply hidden detail we can apply our dash line like so center lines and um, anything you want but they're all still one line as opposed to a number of entities um, same thing applies when it comes to say the likes of our dimension that we applied over here I'm going to just select that control and zoom in on it and first of all just select all my relevant lines right the wrong one there and what I'm going to do is right click on those format the object, just going to change the line weight to them and so 1.25 line color I'm going to, because their dimensions I'm going to change them to um, line color like that, line style change them to round as well it's probably the easiest thing just to highlight their control and A everything and just maybe apply a round to everything at the very start keeps everything nice and neat and um, so here we have that's the right size it's the right color I'm going to just apply my arrow heads the this here and again you can select and um, all your arrow uh, all your lines you want to make your arrow heads all at the one time so you don't have to go and do it individually but we right click form a shape and this time again still in line style we go arrow settings you can apply your arrow so you can see we have a number of options here Close filled is the standard, so that's what we're going to work with. And they again not overly standard arrows; they're quite chunky. So below here we have end size. We can apply something a little bit more standard. And um, because our text was brought in as Arial, we're able to select that. We're able to do everything that we would want to do with text within PowerPoint. So just selecting it like so, I can change that to color actually I give it the same color so orange and we can like size it up a little bit Keep maintaining our move it there just to maintain our gap and um, what's handy as well is that because all of these pieces here we know that they're all going to be um, animated as one sequence we can highlight each of them like so and it's easy to group them all together so we can right click on it and we can go group and we can group them all together or a handy little shortcut is if you go control and G on your keyboard that will group them all as well so there they are grouped together as one solid entity um, and in that way our drone is pretty much ready to start being animated so the second video will take care of the animation side of things so hopefully you'll join us for that then